Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I did a Tangram tumbler. This is one I did before. I love it. It's all glitter. But today we're only going to be using one glitter. Instead we're going to be using alcohol ink markers. And this stencil I'm using, again, is from L.E.B. Creates on Etsy. And I will leave a link to that in the descriptions. So this time the way I put it on was just like I would put on a regular decal. And that really helped. Instead of starting at one end, I started in the middle. And, I mean, y'all saw me struggle in my other tutorials with a full wrap stencil. So this way it worked out perfectly for me. So each one of these alcohol ink markers has a different number on it. So I'm going to write the numbers on my stencil so that I can stick to a pattern um, using a gel ink pen, by the way, on black. Um, wasn't the greatest idea. I was able to see it if I held it a certain way. Next time I'll probably use a Sharpie. But you just want to either write out the colors, the name of the color on your stencil or numbers or whatever. You just want to try and kind of plan it out before you start. So I'm starting with the first number and I'm going to peel off all the stencil that has that number on it. And then I will go in and I will color those spots with the coordinating alcohol ink marker and then move on to the next one. So as you can see, it comes with a broad tip and a fine tip. I'll be using the broad tip. These alcohol ink markers are a good alternative to regular alcohol inks. They're just like using a marker. If you let them sit for too long without being used, they do dry out. This one was a little dry, um, but the other ones work just fine. So if you decide that you want to invest in these, make sure that it's something that you're going to be using so that they don't dry out on you and you waste your money. So I had a couple of boo-boos. It was mostly in just that one spot on the cup. Um, my paint might have been a little bit too thin right there, but all I did to fix it was spray some of the same spray paint into a medicine cup and then I used a paintbrush to just touch up those spots. So that's a little tip for you.
right about right around here I started to question my judgment on using these markers because it was not looking pretty at all but I've been doing this long enough to know that they don't always start out pretty so just keep going with it and that's what I did and I'm super happy that I did not give up on this cup I did not pay attention to the colors that I used I will look at them again and see if I can figure out which ones I used um, I didn't pay attention to the colors because not everybody is going to have this exact same set um, so they're not going to be the exact same colors I mean with this you can do just about pretty much any color combination you want to do it's all up to you and I had a small pack so I didn't have a lot of options to choose from um, these come in small packs I think like 10 a 10 pack and they go all the way on up to I think a 72 pack or higher so you can get different size packs of these and there's a lot of things that you can do with them as well You can even get a, I believe, a 10 pack. I've gotten one from Walmart, and I think I got one from Hobby Lobby or Michaels, one of the two. So if you want to just try them out, just get a small pack to start with I apologize for the silence in between me talking. I don't do music in my tutorials anymore. Too much hassle to mess with.
it's hard to tell what some of these colors are going to look like until you actually get them onto something and I would suggest um, coloring on a piece of paper before you start. I didn't do that. I just went by the color that was on the cap and some of them came out close to what was on the cap. Some came out a little darker, some came out a little lighter. So I was kind of surprised when I got it on the cup. Um, next time I will test them out on a piece of paper first, but this time I'm happy with the cup, so I'm not I'm not upset about it. But next time I will um, test them out on a piece of printer paper or something before I use them. And right here I'm just going back over the very first color that I did because that marker was um, had dried out a little bit. So I'm just going back over it and the marker's working a little bit better than it did the first time but it's still um, it's still a little dry. So alcohol inks do this really cool thing when you hit them with alcohol. They kind of make, they kind of look like cells. So I was worried about spraying directly onto the cup, spraying alcohol directly onto it because I didn't want to lose my pattern. I didn't want everything to run. So I just sprayed some on just very lightly on a paper towel and then lightly dabbed it. And it was a pretty cool effect, but it wasn't quite what I was going for. What it did do that I will probably do again that I next time I make one of these is as I was dabbing, it was picking up the different colors. So every time I would dab on another area, it would drop those colors onto the other colors, kind of blending them and mixing them a little. So that was really cool. I like that effect. But it, like I said, it wasn't quite what I was going for. So I went ahead and I got the alcohol ink bottle. And I'm holding it. I'm holding the bottle close to me while I'm holding the cup away from me. You don't want to spray a large amount of alcohol onto it or your ink will run. You just want to very lightly mist and when you do it makes this cool I don't know splatter kind of cell effect and that's what I was going for. So for my bottom, I'm using Tim Holtz Indigo Alcohol Ink, and I'm just putting it on there with a paper towel. Before I did my bottom, I did seal the rest of the cup twice with Krylon Kamar Varnish. And now that I have my bottom covered, now I'm going to do the same thing with the alcohol. I'm going to spritz it with the alcohol. And since my cup is already sealed, I don't have to worry about the alcohol affecting the rest of the cup. So once the bottom was dry, I went ahead and I sealed that again twice with the Kamar varnish. And now I'm doing a very thin coat of epoxy. I knew that I wanted to have some glitter on this cup. I just didn't want the whole thing to be um, glitter. So I'm just doing a, it was probably less than two mLs that I used for epoxy. 
And now I'm using Nivea. I love Nivea. It's like that hot sauce commercial. I sprinkle that bleep on everything. I add Nivea to everything. It's a gorgeous color and it is perfect for the Tacket method. So once I got Nivea on there, I didn't like it. Um, it was too much. It covered up too much of the cup. I could barely see any of those cells from the alcohol. I was not happy with it. So I had to figure out a plan B. I used regular epoxy, not the fast set, so it was going to be a few hours before it was dry. So after I turned the camera off, I sat there for about five minutes trying to figure out what to do. And I thought, just try wiping some of it off. And remember I said Nivea is perfect for the Tacket method. So as I was wiping it off, that gorgeous shimmery glow started to come out and I was happy. And now I can see each individual little shape and I can see all the cells. So I was good. I was happy. So this is 20 mLs of epoxy. I was only going to do 15, but I was a little bit off with my measurements. So I had to, I ended up putting 20 on. I didn't need a thick, heavy coat since I um, brushed most of that glitter off and helped the rest of it to lay flat. I didn't need anything really thick. So now we're ready to do the next step and that is to add the nail tape. Now before I did this I did have to do a very, very light sand. Um, just where there's some little, um, little bits of glitter sticking up out of the epoxy. And there wasn't much. So just a very light sand, especially around the bottom and the top where I was going to be sticking my tape to. I needed it to be smooth. This nail tape that I'm using, it's uh, like an icy blue color, so it was really pretty for this cup. And this part takes a minute. I've seen where some people have been able to pre-cut these little pieces on their silhouette or cricket. Um, I haven't figured out how to do that yet and I don't mind doing it this way. So you're just gonna, you're basically outlining each shape. So you're gonna be laying the top and the bottom pieces and then once you get all those done then you'll go in with your uh, vertical lines and outline the sides, if that makes sense. You also want to make sure that when you lay your tape, that uh, up at the top, you don't want to take your tape all the way to the very top of the cup. You want to leave just a little sliver of room between the top of the cup and your tape so that you can get a good seal with your epoxy.
I think nail tapes are now one of my favorite things to use. I use them for this, I use them for the plaid, I use them for the argyle. Um, and there's, they come in so many different colors. I just, I love using them. All right, so now that we got those done, now it's time to do our vertical lines. And the way I do mine, you don't have to do them that way. Um, but I start on one side at the top and I'll bring the nail tape down. I'll take it across the bottom of the cup and back up the other side directly across from where I started. And once you have all the vertical lines covered then you'll have kind of a pinwheel effect at the bottom of your cup again you do not have to do it this way you can start at the top of the cup and at when you get to the bottom um, or right at the bottom of the cup you can cut your tape and then start over um, that's totally up to you My tape was getting a little twisted, so I was trying to get it straightened back out again. Alright, so now we're all done. There's our little pinwheel at the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this two times with CC DIY Quick Coat. 
Uh, the, the nail tape does have a tendency in some areas to lift up so I like to seal it and I'm using my gloved finger so that I can feel any areas that I might have missed and some of the nail tape did pull up so I just took my Cricut weeding or my tweezers and press them down and as I was pressing them down I blew on the quick coat to dry it faster. If you try and stick it down while the quick coat is still wet it's, it, it won't stick. So I was trying to help the process along. So I just run around the cup to any little pieces that were trying to come up and push them back down with the tweezers and trying to dry the quick coat faster and for the most part it helped there was maybe one or two stubborn pieces but so after this first layer of quick coat is dry I let it dry for about 15 minutes and I don't show it on here but I came back and put on a second coat of quick coat and then you want to make sure it's completely dry before you put epoxy on it. So this is 20 ml of epoxy and I did have to, after this was dry, I did have to do another light sand because there were some stubborn um, stubborn nail tape ends but just a very light sand and then I did another 15 ml of epoxy to finish it off and it was done. So I know this video didn't do this cup any justice so I wanted to show y'all some close-up pictures of it. I absolutely love this cup I love how it came out. You can see all those little cells from the alcohol. I'm definitely going to be doing it this way again. Don't get me wrong, the all glitter ones are absolutely gorgeous, but this one is just as gorgeous. See all those different colors, all the cells, and of course then you got Nevea. I'm so happy with this cup. Bye everyone.